Hi everyone, welcome. This is Rachel Georges, the artist behind Gorgeous Mixed Media. So today I'm just going to do a very simple pearl puddle pour. And here you see me testing out my paint consistencies. And for this piece, I did have to mix up a new base coat. So anytime I do that, I'm going to go ahead and test, you know, the base coat and make sure it's, you know, creating the cells that I'm looking for. I don't want it to be too strong, but I don't want it to be uh, unreactive either. So testing your paints will save you a lot of heartache in the long run. If you just uh, take, this is a wooden panel, or you could use an old canvas or Yupo paper and just put a few drops of that paint and spread them out with your palette knife. You can see very quickly, you know, if your consistencies are right. Um, and so for this one, I am using up a lot of leftover puddle paints. I want to get ready to do a different color palette, but, you know, I like to try to utilize all of my paint. I don't want to waste anything. And so this is going to be a very green, very earthy kind of pour. And uh, so you can see the cells there. They look good. And so this was very reactive. And like I said, I did mix up a brand new base coat. Um, here I'm just painting the sides to help my pour stick to the edges. And I... Uh, you know, I do that generally in all my pores. If I'm using a split color, I'll try to paint, you know, the edge that I intend to pour that split color on, uh, just to avoid that canvas bleed through. Um, and here I'm showing you the primary elements that I mixed up. This is leftover paint, and I just combined them and added a little bit more Floetrol to those paints because I didn't have any in the original pour. And that's just to ensure I get some reaction against that base coat. And then, of course, a lot of those leftover puddle paints. Um, and so I'll put the ratios down in the description for my base coat. I did add the Apple Barrel Acrylic Gloss White just to see if I noticed any difference on the cells. I've seen some other people include that in their base coats recently, so I wanted to give it a shot and see... You know if I liked the addition of that or not um, of course it's not necessary to get the cells but you you know test out your recipes play with them see what creates the look that you're going for and that's that's what I'm doing here and so uh, generally when I'm doing a pour I'll start from the lightest color and then work my way up to the darkest uh, the exception being here with those primary elements, I usually layer those in first or second uh, because they usually bleed through and kind of take over. Um, so I, I do want to see some of that bleed through come through on some of those cells. Um, and then I'm laying, laying in that dark indigo phthalo mixture. It might have had a little bit of phthalo green in that mix. I can't remember because like I said it's it's leftover paint um, and I also poured this a little bit differently you'll notice I didn't like puddle them like usual I kind of s s swirled them around and did tr not a typical puddle on these just to again experiment and see if I like the look and again this is 20 minutes later you want to let it develop to see where those cells are going to pop up um, and now I'm going to go back in and lay in some more of those puddle paints with my uh, popsicle sticks and my palette knife and again that's just uh, those primary elements and then the indigo color that I'm that I'm laying back over the top and here in a moment you'll see me add some of the deco art garnet that's that metallic extreme sheen garnet i feel like it just adds a really pretty contrast against all of these blues and greens um, and i'm just adding some dots this is me playing 
<laughs> and I feel like this is something that shouldn't be so structured. You really should have fun with this medium. Um, try different things. Yes, paint is expensive. And yes, uh, you don't want to worry about ruining a painting. But you also have to let yourself be free to experiment a little bit and find your style and what you like to add. So I just laid in those uh, primary elements, Plumeria by Color Art. And with that, I mixed in a little bit of their Vivid, I want to say it's Vivid Enamel. It's the paint that they send in the kit when you purchase your primary elements. It's just what you can use to mix up those pigments. And um, I also added a little bit of GAC and Liquitex Pouring Medium as well as that vivid enamel paint. And it's really just, it's the binder for the pigments so that you can paint with them. Uh, but I feel like it acts like an enamel. It creates kind of a cloud effect with those primary elements. And you'll see that they continue to spread over those paints that have sunken and kind of put, push those paints back up to the surface and kind of blend together and create just a really pretty look overall. And so from here on out, it's just a lot of play. You'll see me add uh, little drips of the white enamel paint in places where I feel like it needs you know, another cell or, you know, I'll add some more color here and there as well. And so it's, you know, it's not a planned thing. It's very organic. You just kind of intuitively go with your gut on these types of things and um, try to create an interesting composition. Uh, so I, even though this was a very simple pour, you know, lately I've been doing like a lot of split base coats. I've been experimenting with that translucent base. And uh, I just, for this one, I wanted to do something a little more simple. And now I'm dropping in those metallic alcohol inks. This is the brass color by Pinata. And I feel like it just adds a little more dimension to that piece. I'm a big fan of texture and I love the way they uh, kind of sit up on top of the paint. It creates some, some nice shine to the overall piece. And so I think one of the things that I love the most about this painting is the just the movement. Um, it really has a beautiful flow to it. I like how the, you know, the light yellow kind of fades out to green and then to blue. Um, and then that beautiful garnet that pushes back up to the surface when you add those primary elements. Um, so overall... You know, I th this is probably one of my favorites. So I do feel like that Apple Barrel acrylic gloss maybe made these cells a little bit sharper. Um, I don't notice a huge difference, uh, but there is there is a little, a slight difference. You know, usually when you add that deco art satin enamel to your white, I feel like it gets very grainy, like the cell structure gets kind of grainy. And I think that this Apple Barrel white gloss paint kind of helps keep them a little sharper. I'll have to definitely do some more experimentation with it um, for sure. And I'll let you guys know what I think overall. All right, and so this is what it looks like wet. Um, and it does continue to shift a little bit even after this look. But I just love that center with all those colors blending together. 
All right, and so these are the dried results. I did do some brush work off camera, probably about 20 or 30 minutes worth. Um, and mostly just, I went in with that high flow iridescent gold and did some brush work with that. Uh, but here you see me shading some of those puddle paint colors and I'm just kind of adding some pop to those cells, creating some more depth, some more contrast there. But that's, that's overall it. This is uh, my process and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you have any questions, feel free to put those in the comments. Don't forget to give me a like, uh, subscribe if you enjoy this content, and uh, don't forget to click those bell notifications so you get an alert anytime there's a new film. And also, if there's something that you would like me to do a video on, uh, please do put that in the comments, and I'll be sure to try to do those types of videos. So with that, I will put on some music for the rest of the video. And if you stick around, you'll see the finished results at the end. Thank you so much and have a wonderful week. Thank you.